This week we wrap up our exploration of GRIB by looking at how we can make GRIB files work with units in MetPy, and how we can find GRIB messages closest to the time that we're interested in. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to wrap up talking about GRIB files, for now at least, and talk about how we can find GRIB messages that we're interested in based on time, as well as how we can attach units to those GRIB messages to make them useful within MetPy, because you'll see it may not work quite as you expect. Again, we'll probably revisit this topic using other libraries, but right now we're going to use PyGRIB. So I've gone to the FTP site for the National Weather Service here in the US, and I've downloaded ds.temp.bin, which is the temperature forecast file. You could also work with the apparent temperature forecast, ds.apt.bin, if you wanted to work with something a little bit different. So going into a notebook, we're going to start out with quite a few imports. I'm going to, of course, import pygrib, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt so we can get a quick look at some of this data. From metpy.units, I'm going to import units. I'm going to import numpy as np. And from datetime, I'm going to import datetime and time delta. And then of course we'll use the matplotlib inline magic so our plots show up in the notebook. So let's start out and think about units. I'm going to go ahead and open the grib file. So remember that's pygrib.open ds.temp.bin and store it in the variable grbs for gribs. I'm going to get a single grib message. In this case, the first one. Remember that grim messages start at number one, so a zero index does not work here. And let's look at an attribute of this message, the unit attribute. So grib.units, we get Kelvin. So this is the temperature forecast in Kelvin, which is probably not what we want to plot that in. We probably want to plot it in Fahrenheit or maybe Celsius. So let's go ahead and get the masked array of values out. So temperatures is grib.values. And if we look at the type of temperatures, we see that it is indeed a masked array. All right, so let's try attaching some units. Temperatures equal temperatures times units and Kelvin. So this is how we would normally attach units. Let's see what happens. Oh, the cell runs. Everything appears great. Let's look at temperatures. It's still a masked array. Let's see if we have a units attribute now. We don't. The masked array has no attribute units. So what's actually happened is this did nothing. Units did not get attached to temperatures. The multiplication operator from the masked array is what was run, and it does not know how to handle attaching a units attribute. So nothing works. We just silently shed those units. So as it turns out, the answer is a little bit counterintuitive, and we've mentioned this in some other contexts before, but it's to put the unit on the left side so that pints multiplication operator runs. And now if we look at temperatures.units, we have Kelvin. If we look at the type of temperatures, we see that it is a pint quantity array. So just switching that operator to be on the left side makes all the difference. So with that, we can actually use pints unit conversion instead of having to handle that ourselves, which is really nice. So for example, if I were to do an IM show on temperatures, and remember this is just a quick and dirty way to look at the data. I'm gonna put a color bar with it we can see that we are indeed in Kelvin. And of course, we don't have any kind of map projection and the way the data plots ends up having uh, the origin up here at the upper left. 
so it looks like the country is uh, flipped around. But now let's try doing a unit conversion just to make sure everything works as expected. So I'm going to do a plot.im show temperatures.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll put a color bar on. And there we go. That is a valid range for degrees Fahrenheit. And now we don't have to worry about doing that unit conversion manually. I've seen a lot of folks that are doing unit conversions manually when they've been dealing with mass arrays because they notice that the units don't attach properly and this is the solution. It's no different with this grib data. All right, so now let's tackle another problem. Remember, I'm going to have to seek back to zero in my grib file because we've got all of these messages. So I'm gonna gribs.seek and I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the file and then for grib in gribs print grib. So if I do that, we see that we've got the forecast time out here and there are a lot of forecast times, so many minutes from an initial analysis time. But I want to know, I've got an event coming up at some time in the future and I want the temperature forecast that's closest to that event. How can I do that? Well, there are several ways that you could approach this problem. I'm going to show you the way that I approached it, and I think this is a relatively concise way to do so. So first, of course, I'm going to seek back to zero, and then I'm going to create a list of times and then actually turn that into an array so I can do some math on it. So to do that, I'm going to use times equals mp.array and then a list comprehension, grib.validate for grib in gribs. So this list comprehension is going to do just what our loop above did for each grib message in the grib file. We're going to get the valid date and append that to a list. At the end, I'm gonna turn that list into an array so I can do math with it. All right, so now I need to have a desired time. When do I want my forecast closest to? Well, in that case, I'm going to say that my event is date time dot utc now plus time delta hours equal 12. So 12 hours from the current time, I want the forecast closest to that. In fact, that'll probably be close to when I'm getting up and getting around in the morning. And I want to know if I need to grab a sweater or not when I leave. All right, so there's our desired time. Now I need to calculate the time difference between each Grim message and the desired time. So the delta times is going to be the times minus my desired time. If we look at delta times, we see here we've got uh, minus a day and some seconds, and then yeah, it's gonna be right around here where I want my forecast. So how am I going to find the index of that in an automated way? Well, I'm going to find it, call it index min, using numpy's argmin function. Now we can't just call this on our delta times because if we do, and we look at what the result is, it's index zero. And that's because that is indeed the smallest. It is a negative number. It is the minimum value. So we want to look at the absolute value. So if I look at the absolute value of the number of seconds that I'm off, from my desired time, we get index 12. Going back up here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so if I look at times 12, and I look at my desired time, does that make sense? Yes, it does. My desired time was at 9.13 on the 29th, and times 12 is at nine o'clock on the 29th. So that is indeed the closest value. We can look at 11, that's an hour sooner, and at 13, that's an hour later. So we have correctly found the index, and now we could go get that grim message. So again, don't forget that we're going to gribs.seek zero. And now let's try to get the message. Grib equals gribs. And what should I put here? Should it be index min? It actually needs to be index min plus one because don't forget grib messages start at index one. Well, that doesn't work. 
It says key must be an integer message number or a slice. Well, if we look at the type of index min, it's a NumPy integer. Oddly enough, we need to wrap this to typecast it to just a plain Python integer. And then it's going to go ahead and work. PyGrib can't handle that NumPy integer type being passed. Now, if I look at the valid date of my message, we see that we did indeed get the right message. It's nine o'clock on the 29th. So there's a little bit of work to do this, and I would probably go ahead and wrap this up into a function if I were going to do this a lot, going through and trying to find a specific grib message. But the advantage of making that a list is now I don't have to scroll through that grib file every time I'm looking for a specific time. I can just use my list, find what index, and then I can seek to that individual message. I could even do that a little more intelligently if I were gonna go through and make a map for many of these times and make sure I go forward so I don't ever have to seek backwards. I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.